Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so it's Friday. We've all made it to the end of the week, I hope. Um, tonight, I'm gonna be cooking those chicken thighs I marinated overnight. I still haven't decided if I'm going to put them in the oven or just on a grill pan on the top of this um, stove. I'm really thinking about broiling them in the oven. That'd be the easiest. And um, since I'm already gonna have the oven on, um, cause tonight's gonna be some homemade mac and cheese the chicken thighs, and asparagus. So, yeah, I saved myself a lot of work and just do it all in the same thing, right? Um, sourdough is still going strong, doing really well. So I think this is like day 30 on this sourdough starter. So I think I finally got it right. Yay, me. I need to feed it here in a little bit. Um, but it's been doing really, really good. So, um, just bringing you guys along to have another conversation with me while I prep dinner, um, get that going. It's been a rainy day here, um, overcast, dreary, temperatures like in the 50s, yuck. Um, but I've got pasta boiling, I think you guys can see that. So I've got it, I think it's done, so we're gonna turn it off. This pot, it's an ugly pot, right? Um, and as you guys can see, I think you guys can see, it's misshapen. That poor pot right here, right, right here. Um, it's an old, um, from an old kitchen set my mom had. And it was a Sears brand Kenmore. They don't make Kenmore, um, brand stuff really anymore, right? And, uh, I don't think people shop at Sears. <laughs> with the way Sears is closed down. So this pot is at least, I think, 48, 49 years old, because I'm 48. So it's getting close to 50 if it isn't. And it used to be part of a set, and it had a red skillet the same size and a bigger skillet and a small red pan, and they all had matching lids. And this thing's warped. It's gnarly looking. I don't have any plans of throwing it away or getting rid of it. My mom made a lot of meals in that pot for her family. Um, spaghetti, mac and cheese, Spanish rice, chicken and noodles, stew. And it's been a lot of places. It's moved from Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri. It's been a lot of places, a lot of miles, fed a lot of people. And um, so that pot's seen a lot. Um, so with that said, I'm going to shred up some cheddar cheese. Um, so my husband's from Oregon, born and raised. And we lived in Oregon for the uh, first few years of our marriage together. And Tillamook is a, a dairy on the coast at Tillamook, Oregon. And I just thought it was something Oregonians were once again bragging about unnecessarily. But I'm going to tell you, Tillamook cheese and ice cream and yogurt is some of the best you can find. So I was so excited when I started finding it here in the Midwest. And so I can find the baby loaves like this at Walmart where you can find... Um, the loaves at Sam's Club or Costco. Costco also sells the Pepper Jack, the Kojak, the Sharp Cheddar, the Mild Cheddar, the Medium Cheddar. And um, so I'm going to shred up this, not the whole <laughs> loaf, but uh, about two or three cups worth of this. And uh, it's going to become part of our sauce for mac and cheese along with some Velveeta. Now, when I was a kid, Velveeta was expensive, and it was maybe like three something, right? Or two ninety nine, I think I remember, um, for the big loaves, and it was something that was considered a treat. It wasn't something we ate every day, and it was mainly just for mac and cheese. So, in my adulthood, I discovered that we just don't really eat a lot of Velveeta. I, I mean, I use it for Rotel dip mac and cheese and a few other things, but we just don't eat a lot of it. 
They came out a couple years ago with these fresh packs. It's a game changer for us, especially just being the two of us. Um, or if I want to feed more people, I can break out some more of the packs. But, and it's not cheap. I think this is like six bucks. Um, so we just don't use a lot of Alveda, but there's certain things that we like it best in. So this is what the little fresh packs look like. Um, and I'm going to use two of these in tonight's mac and cheese because I want it to be nice and creamy. So definitely if you're a family like us, a huge game changer. The other thing I really like too is there's a Velveeta cheesy sauce. And if I can get that on sale, I'll buy it the sauce packets. Um, but it's like $3 for a box of three or four packets. So it's not exactly um, cost of, you know, friendly or anything like that. But it is definitely prep friendly. Um, but anyways, so I'm going to drain this mac into a colander that is probably close to 30 years old. And I think I bought it at Big Lots for my first apartment. And it's been my favorite colander and it's withstood the test of time. That's for sure. But anyways, I hope everybody's had a good week. That your Friday's been going well. And everybody's going to have a good weekend. Um, we don't have any plans. Play, play it by ear. I would like to get started on the garden, but I think it's supposed to rain again this weekend. So maybe just do some more planning prep. We need to get some more raised beds built. Um, things like that. But... Yeah. So, I'm like at the heaviest I've ever been in my entire life in weight. And as you've probably noticed, Jennifer's a chubby. And I've been really struggling. So, I'd seen a picture of myself at mom's funeral, and it made me just cry. And I knew right then and there I needed to get back in gear. And I, it's been a struggle. It's been a real struggle. Um, more than I ever thought it would be. I was doing really good. Doing um, workout videos, walk at home videos, um, 30 minutes a day. Getting my rings closed on my watch for everything. Went to Hawaii. Thank you, brothers, for that trip. That was amazing. Um, had the time of my life in Hawaii. Swimming and snorkeling and hiking Diamond Head, which I thought I was going to die, but I got it done. And um, since I've come back, I have just struggled uh, don't worry I wash my hands before I turn on the camera I always wash my hands when I'm cooking don't worry but it's been a real struggle you guys I'm like having a hard time um I really hate waiting till the end of the work day to work out because by the end of the work day I'm just mentally and emotionally and physically drained and exhausted and the last thing I want to do is go work out I find that in the morning before work is better for me and it makes my day that much smoother and prepares me. So I'm just really struggling with this right now. <clears throat> my schedule at work's going to change again on the third. And so I'm hoping with that change, not starting at 6 a.m., that I'll get up and walk. Because um, right now, walking is the best exercise for me. I've never been a runner, even though I did run track um, back in the day. 
running is just not my idea of a good time. Um, walking is just a good thing for me. I like to walk, especially outdoors. And um, spend that time talking to God and enjoying nature. And uh, so when my mom and I would walk together, that was also a time we'd take breaks, be out there for hours, take a break, sit and visit, talk about everything under the sun, a lot of philosophy and theology, and just a lot of conversation. But um, anyways, anybody else like me that's really struggling with trying to get that workout in and trying to get back on track, let me tell you, it's hard. I really wish I had the body that I had when people used to call me fat back as a teenager. And I look back at those pictures and I'm like, man, I was smoking. Okay, maybe I wasn't smoking, but I had a good body. I wasn't fat. Man, this is not fun. Um, especially as you get pushing 50, being overweight and can't do the things you want to do. Because I want to be one of those old people that's hiking Mount Whitney and doing the Grand Canyon and and I'm old and gray. So I got to get back on track and get that motivation in um, and just get, just get it back. Um, but it's been hard. Um, anyways, if anybody else is like that, let me know in the comments. Um, cut out Dr. Pepper, keeping it at the house because I was drinking two to three, two liters of it a day. It had become my comfort. Uh, we didn't grow up drinking pop. Pop was a rare treat in our family. Um, when we did get it, we had to share a can of pop between the four of us kids. I mean, that's just how rare it was. And we just, and um, because my mom really wanted us to not be full of preservatives and, and crap, right? And so it wasn't because we couldn't afford it. Well, I mean, we probably couldn't, but it was just our treat. And so we just didn't grow up drinking it. And uh, it was kind of a sign of a symbol of um, wealth and ability to do stuff too, I think, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? Um, but anyways, so I'm doing really good. I'm only drinking some pop when we're not home. When we've been out to eat a few times last month. Um, back to drinking water. I do like my sweet tea. Um, but I've not been drinking much of that either. It's mainly just been water with some flavoring packets. Um, so that's feeling good. But the whole exercise thing. So give me a moment. I just shaved my finger on the um, grater. Something I haven't done in over 35, 40 years. Probably closer to 45. Um, I'll be right back. And we'll catch back up after I go and... Uh, Clean us up and bandage it. A little moment. picture insert of my mom and I on one of our walking breaks here. All right, everybody, I'm back. Got my whole finger all um, bandaged up, and I started some butter melting in the pot. As you can see, it's been melting. And uh, we're going to make a roux for the mac and cheese, because I told you we're making it from scratch. And so I'm going to put in about a third cup of flour. And we are going to start whisking this until it's all blended. Bear with me, there's a method to this madness, I promise. So we are going to start blending that with that butter, that flour. So we want to cook the flour. Um, and we want to get it a little bit uh, but brownish color but not too brown because we don't want to burn it and then we want it to be kind of a nutty smell nutty flavor and then that's when how we know our flour and butter are ready so you just want to stir that and cook off all that butter get everything combined and get that flour and that's really starting to look good Let's give it another moment here. So I'm gonna use some evaporated milk. 
just a can of a store brand Winco evaporated milk. Um, you also use plain milk, 2% uh, or whole milk in this. Um, but I'm going to use the evap milk instead of um, heavy cream. So if you don't have heavy cream, how you make heavy cream is milk and butter. That's all heavy cream is, you guys. Um, but I don't have any heavy cream. So I'm going to get some milk in here. You want cold milk. And I'm going to just put about a cup of whole milk, vitamin D. And then I'm going to put in my evaporated milk. And I'm going to stir those up together in just a second. And I'm just going to stir this till everything's combined and until um, we start bubbling. So I want this to all to come together and I want it to thicken. But I don't want it to burn, so I'm going to be stirring it occasionally. And I don't want it to get clumpy and gluey. So I want this to be a nice creamy sauce. So you're going to see me stirring that occasionally. Now also to this I'm going to add salt and pepper. Um, some ground mustard and some garlic powder and then we got our cheese over here still waiting um, like I said I'm gonna be baking this mac and cheese tonight um, to go with chicken thighs and uh, roasted asparagus for our supper I typically eat oh about six or so and then um, my husband just warms up leftovers when he comes home from work later in the night because he comes home later, much later. And I like to try to do things during the week, Monday through Friday, that he can either have kept warm in the crock pot for him or in the, and stay in the oven and that he just has to take out and, you know, warm up. Um, and things that warm up really well. Because we found that things that don't reheat well, that are best served right at the time, they're just not as enjoyable for him. And they've been sometimes a few things that I've been like, oh, that was such a good dinner. And then he'll be like, yeah, it wasn't that great reheated. And so that really breaks my heart. So I know that this is a tried and true. And then it'll make leftovers and we can have it for lunch tomorrow or with a dinner tomorrow, whatever we decide to be our main entree. I really like that cooking once, eating twice, saves me a lot of time and effort, that's a fact. So as you can see, hopefully you guys can see this, it still hasn't bubbled up, um, but it's come together nice and creamy. You're starting to see some bubble formation there, which is good. But to this, at this point, I'm going to sprinkle in some ground mustard. I'm not measuring, I'm just eyeballing, which I promised you guys I'd start measuring so I could help you guys learn how to cook. And I, I'm so sorry, I apologize. I, I've got to get better about that. And I'm just going to sprinkle in some garlic powder. And then shake in some salt. This is just iodized Morton's salt and then some black pepper. Now, I'm gonna go back to whisking this all together, get all these flavors combined. And as you can see, it's really come together well. And we're starting to get nice and um, ready. So, we're gonna start putting in our cheese or grated cheese first. You don't wanna do this all at once, like dump this all in, cause then your cheese isn't gonna get melted and incorporated. You wanna put in a little bit at a time 
And when you put in a little bit at a time, you want to stir it until you see everything combined. And that tells me it's time for some more cheese to be string sprinkled in. So we don't want this to be clumpy. We don't want it to be gooey, but we're getting nice and creamy, right? So this is that Tillamook medium cheddar that I grated up. And I'm not measuring that. I should have measured out two to three cups of that, you guys. Man, I gotta get better at that, huh? All right, so as you can see, it's getting really thick. I want to stop putting in my cheddar. Just one more little bit, because I'm gonna save some of this for the top. And I'm gonna put that back to the side. And then I'm gonna take this, well, first I'm gonna lower my heat. And I'm gonna take this and open this up. I'm gonna put one brick of Velveeta in there to start. I don't want both bricks yet. So I want this to get nice and melted and combined. Now I'm using my plastic spatula because I cannot find my metal one. Um, it's disappeared someplace. I mean my whisk, not my spatula. I think at this time though I can stop whisking it because it's not clumpy, it's not gumpy or gucky, whatever the word is I'm gonna use. And I'm gonna take this and put this in the sink. And put it in the dishwasher and I'm going to switch to one of my wooden spoons that way I can have a better stir. I really like wooden spoons for so much stuff. One because they don't react to a lot of things when you're cooking. Which in the middle will react to different uh, things like vinegar and sauces and stuff. See this pan's all yeah warped and funny. It's still usable though. So many memories. So I'm gonna try to get this Velveeta um, all melted down in there. I might squish some of it so I can get it broken up and stirred around and melting. But yeah, so that's how you make homemade cheese sauce. So this homemade cheese sauce like this, you could use it for dipping in pretzels. Um, it's just what your favorite restaurant makes. They might make it with some beer. You could add beer in at this time. Um, you could add in a Monterey Jack or a white cheddar or Gruyere or Vardy. Um, make a really nice creamy cheese sauce for dipping pretzels or, you know, as a dip. Um, but this is just the basic cheese sauce for macaroni and cheese, for au gratin potatoes, for broccoli cheddar rice, so many things. Nothing crazy, right? Nothing crazy at all. It just takes a few minutes and patience. I think I've about got that Velveeta all melted down in there. I don't think I'm gonna put in that other block of Velveeta since it's just my husband and I. I think that's looking really nice and cheesy. What do you guys think? Oh, there's some Velveeta still there. That's okay, it'll get incorporated. All right, so this time, I'm gonna take it off the heat completely. And I'm gonna pour in my macaroni that we had over there draining in the sink. And yeah, it's a lot of macaroni. Like I said, um, let's make good leftovers for tomorrow. All right, so now this is where I want to start incorporating that. And you could have put butter, more butter on your macaroni, but we don't need all the extra calorie. It'll be good. Mm. But we got enough butter in here. Got enough goodness creamy going on. Look at that. Can you guys see that? Wow. Looking yummy. So 
some mac and cheese is something that we really enjoy at Thanksgiving and family dinners. One of my brothers has taken over the making of it. And we kind of like all have our things that we do. We also kind of take this, um, try to make the best, right? It's kind of a contest always between the four of us and well, with our mom too, but. So, um, I was going to put it in an 8x9, but I think it's too much mac and cheese for an 8x9, so I'm going to spray this 13x9 really quick with some of this. All right, so I've got that good and sprayed. Hopefully you guys can see that, All right? Making you dizzy and sick to your stomachs. And we're gonna pour it in here. I'm gonna start scooping out some of those to make it not so heavy. Look at that creamy goodness. Yum, yum, yum. your hearts out. All right. So now we're going to see if we can get some more of this to dump in. Not be so heavy. I'm trying to lift it. And we're just going to get the rest of that and that cream goodness. In that pan. All right. I'm looking good. So, I can either put breadcrumbs on top with butter. I don't think I'm going to do that um, just because I'm not a big fan of the breadcrumb taste on the um, mac and cheese. This is not one of my favorites. I've got some of these snack packs of Ritz, the fresh packs. I think I'm going to crush these up with some butter, sprinkle it on top, and then on top of that after it has cooked for a while, maybe some more cheese. What do you guys think? Or maybe just this with the butter. I love these little packs so I can just do this. Easy peasy. And... They're all crushed. All right, let's think about this for a second. All right, yeah. So I had half a stick of butter over there for some bread. So I just took half of that half a stick, put it in a little um, Pyrex ramekin and let's melt that in the microwave. And then we'll sprinkle that on top once it's combined, bake it at 350 for 30 minutes um, until it's boilably and golden brown. And then that will be ready for supper. So then I think I'll put the chicken thighs in um, and this roasted asparagus to go with it and dinner's done. So I will um, show you guys this part of it, put it in the oven, and then maybe I'll show you guys when it's done later. All right, so the butter's melted. I'm gonna pour in our Ritz crackers. Mm. 
All right, so I'm just gonna combine the butter and the Ritz, oops, over the board um, until they're nice and well combined. Maybe. All right, and they're ready to go on, right? Because they're all flying over. So we're just gonna sprinkle them all over the top to get some nice crunch of goodness. I think those are all even, Steven, or as close as they can be, right? So that's what it looks like with the rich cracker topping. Let me see, I've got some um, sheet pans in there I need to take out. And that's because I just don't have a lot of room for storage. All right. So I've got the, mic, um, the oven warming up to 350 since I forgot to preheat it earlier. This is what our mac and cheese looks like in the 13 by nine. And I'll come back when I'm ready to put it in the oven and I'll show you guys that. And then I'll show you when I take it out, how it looks. See you guys in a bit. All right, everybody. So the oven's preheated and ready. I'm gonna put the mac and cheese in. Um, I'm gonna put that on the bottom rack. Just like that. Remembering I'm putting it in the middle. So I want it to um, get even distribution of heat, right? Just like I did my bread. I've just got a foil pan. I keep these on hand um, for if we've got potlucks or dinners and things, but we haven't done that in forever. Um, or when I'm just lazy and I don't feel like doing a lot of dishes. So, um, I'm gonna put that this chicken thighs that I married last night just straight into that. And there's three of them, so my husband can have two. And I'm really hoping this marinade tastes good. Now, last night I realized I did not salt um, the marinade or put Tabasco in that it called for. So I'm not gonna do, um, do that, Tabasco. But I'm just gonna sprinkle some sea salt. Just some, just some sea salt. I keep in a container like this. Um, the container came from Dollar Tree back when Dollar Tree was still a buck before it became a buck 25 tree. And um, I've got a lot of them and I just keep my things like sea salt that I buy in bulk. And then we're gonna sprinkle some pepper. And then we're gonna sprinkle some paprika for some color. And as you can tell, I'm kind of playing this by ear seeing how things turn out, if it all fills. We've got some sweet baby rays that we can pour on top. All right, so they're gonna bake at 350 also. They're gonna take about 45 minutes though, or until, um, I believe it's 150, 165 degrees, um, until the juices run clear. So nothing worse than serving raw chicken, right? So. Um, if you don't have a thermometer, a meat thermometer, I totally recommend one or just getting to know, you know, like that you have, um, a good understanding of what to look for when you um, cook your food. So that's all for right now. Um, I might show you guys a finished project product here in a little bit. Um, so about 30, 45 minutes when everything comes out of the oven. I'll put it on a plate and I'll show you guys how it turned out. And I hope you guys have a great Friday evening if we don't talk again. Um, and I will see you here next time.
All right, so I just pulled the mac and cheese out of the oven. Look at that, it's all bubbly and yummy and looks good. The chicken's not quite done yet, but I'm pretty pleased. I'm gonna taste it here a little bit after it's cooled down a little bit. But look at that, yummy, 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 creamy goodness, yum. All right, so here's the finished product for supper tonight. The mac and cheese, roasted chicken thigh, and roasted asparagus. It smells so good. I can't wait to dig in. Hope everybody has a good Friday night. And until next time, I'll see you later.